What's going on, friends, family, neighbors, cousins, aunties, uncles, grandma, grandpa, look, everybody out there in YouTube land, how you guys doing? Welcome to Feel Good TV. It's your man, LGZ, LJ, uh, James, whatever you want to call me, just don't call me late for dinner, okay? <laughs> but I, psh. So look, today what we're going to be making right here on the channel is a, a super food soup. You know, we in the season right now, COVID, you know, not COVID, I call it COVID. Y'all know how people are. COVID got people out here shook. So I have a soup that I make that is packed full of tons of superfoods, okay? Um, you know, watercress, lemongrass, uh, celery, carrots, onions, shallots, garlic, ginger, uh, Thai chili peppers. These type things are gonna be our aromatic so we can pull all of these really good nutrients out. Cinnamon that are gonna pull really good nutrients out to really help boost your immune system and help your body fight off these germs. Not only that, uh, we will, we also will be able to create a base uh, for the soup and a stock that can be very versatile that you can use to flavor other dishes and you will watch us prepare uh, a creamy rice pilaf from that dish as well. Oh, and then I mentioned it's vegan. That's right, here on Feel Good TV, you're gonna be seeing primarily plant-based recipes. I encourage people to eat more plants, judgment-free zone here. Hey, meat is good, but I just feel like, you know, in order to, to be the best, to be, uh, you know, in optimal position, we gotta increase our plant intake, and I try to primarily live and survive off of plants. So look, guys, buckle your seat belts up. Let's get ready. Come on, let's take that ride. Before we get rolling, we're gonna make a quick pit stop by my local Asian market. This is somewhere I like to come to get a lot of ingredients you really can't find at your local grocery stores, the big chain grocery stores. There's a lot of power packed food in here and uh, a lot of great produce that you just won't see on the aisles at your grocery store. So I'm gonna take a quick run in here. I'm gonna grab some watercress uh, full of a lot of vitamins and minerals. I'm gonna pick up some fresh bulbs of ginger and some of the biggest carrots you ever seen in your life amongst other things but you know you get the picture let's get into this soup cup These are what we call aromatics, okay? And a lot of more traditional uh, styles of cooking and maybe not so much uh, here in Western civilization, but you know, over in Asia and India, Africa, places that matter. Uh, people will utilize foods like these and bigger pieces to really extract uh, certain flavors and nutrients. So. You know, they'll, they'll have these rusty chops to them. Nothing pretty, nothing uniform, but you're really just, uh, you know, utilizing the food to pull out whatever the good stuff is. So that's why I'm kind of doing uh, this rough trap, rough chop here. It's kind of no different from, you know, everybody knows, you know, shallot here. Everybody knows that, you know, when you put them onions and peppers in your pot, when it's time to cook, um, you know, and they get your house smelling all good and everything. Same effect with the aromatic. That's because it's pulling out, you know, in essence, that good stuff. So uh, we're using these here because we really want, we really want to pull off um, all of the goodness gracious that's in these aromatics. Shallots, uh, a lot of health benefits. Onions, obviously high in vitamin E, uh, you know, things of that nature. Uh, antioxidant properties. You know, you always hear about grandma and grandpa and them. I done heard all type of stories. You know, I used to have a cold. Grandma come in the room, put a raw onion on my foot. Then before you know it, <laughs> my cold be gone. Hey, I don't know how true all that is, but we know onions do have some pretty miraculous properties. And again, this soup right here is going to help battle the COVID. So I'm just getting some of the skin off, some of the shells off. 
you know, some people even would uh, prefer to keep some of these things. Here, I got some lemongrass, all right? Very unique. Um, something you don't see a lot in, uh, you know, a lot of Western cuisine, but they use it a lot uh, over in India and things of that nature. Lemongrass, the oil out of lemongrass actually is one of the essential oils. Um, has a whole lot of health properties, a ton of things that are super beneficial. Um, it's a bug repellent. It's great for you and your immune system. It smells really, really good. Like I said, it's, it's considered one of the essential oils. So what I do with this here, we won't really eat this um, in the soup, but what, I, what what you guys will see me take out here in a little bit, we, again, we're using this as an aromatic. We're pulling, we're pulling those good properties out and we want that essential oil uh, to come out. The tips, I may not necessarily use, cut the bulb off. Now in order to unlock the oils, this is one of my good friends right here. It's a mortar and pestle. You probably see people grinding all type of things up, you know, works really well. But I just use this like a hammer to pound on my lemongrass so I can release those oils. That's all I'm doing with this. Now you gotta be careful with your lemongrass, lemongrass because there's a whole lot of layers to it. So you might pound on it and actually see something shoot out. So you want to contain those in there. Another good thing, we got cinnamon sticks here. I know some of y'all are saying, look, man, we don't want this to be sweet, but it's not going to be sweet. Cinnamon has a ton of properties for your health and your immune system. It's phenomenal for digestion and things of that nature. So we're going to rock with that. Another thing, I'm going to leave these, these Thai chilies whole, but, you know, they got... Uh, capsaicin and things in them that's going to help us out. It's not really going to provide any spice as much as me just utilizing that stuff uh, for the health benefit. And here we got one of the stars of the show here. This is watercress. You guys, as you saw in the footage, I went to my local Asian market here and they had, that's where they had the watercress available. Um, and it was very affordable. It was it was a dollar and twenty cents a bunch. If I'm not mistaken, watercress has about forty vitamins and minerals in it. It is considered a superfood. It is extremely healthy for you. And this is again is one of the star players. It can be a very very tough green though. The stem can be very tough. Uh, you know, my grandfather used to love something called creasy green, creasy salad, and that would be super chewy. So you had to cook it in a pressure cooker. Or cook it all day in order to make it tender. All right, watercress. Uh, you have to really pay that that close attention to it to make sure that it gets tender when you cook it. So what I like to do to help aid the process is you see me chop it up, um, you know, to uh, uh, kind of mince it up a little bit. That's going to help the cooking process. Okay, it kind of has a peppery, uh, you know, think about a cross between spinach and arugula or something like that. Kind of a peppery taste. I like it, but I love vegetables. So, now don't worry, I ain't gonna cut my fingers off. I'm gonna try to utilize proper hand motion because I know we're gonna have some people out there that be like, hey, cuz, <laughs> I'm gonna cut your fingers off. Don't worry, I ain't gonna cut them off. If I happen to cut one of my fingers off, uh, I got a couple spares back there in the room. <laughs> All right, I literally give it this chop like this. Y'all, it's so many good ingredients in there. So what I'm gonna go ahead and start doing, my pot already started heating up. And what we get ready to do now is transfer some of these aromatics, some of that goodness. We about to now transfer some of these aromatics over to the pot and we gonna get it rolling. Let's go. The smoke is good. Have no fear. You want that smoke because we're gonna, what we basically gonna do is char off these aromatics here. So watch out. 
All right, so right here, this chart that I was talking about, I know you might say it looks burnt. It's not burnt. These are the sugars caramelizing. Y'all take a peek down in there, John, okay? All right, that's what we want to see. Now, I'm even going to make it even more messy, okay? I got a little Italian seasoning in here. All right, I really don't do a lot of measure for the recipe. I do it to taste. You really can't go wrong with the herbs. Again, this soup is about picking COVID. Right? We got some black pepper here. All right, I'm gonna just dump in a couple dashes. All right. Getting up till you get in the pot. All right, that's enough. <laughs> here, we got some garlic powder. On the eighth day, Jesus made garlic powder and he said that it was good. Use as much garlic powder as you want. Why? Because that garlic is good. And if you're in the South, you ain't got to call it garlic. We call it garlic with a T. You got some of that garlic. <laughs> Sage, another medicinal herb. People uh, know this most from making dressing and uh, sausage and things of that nature. Let me give it a stir. Cause I, oh, that's what we want. That's what we want. You see that? He said, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> That's what we want. We're gonna back our heat down some. Cause it gets a little spooky rocks in here. All right. Next, we got cumin. Another storied, healthy, potent spice. We got a cumin there. We got my cousin here, paprika. <laughs> y'all know y'all got a cousin paprika. You can't go wrong with paprika either. It's actually made from a little pepper. Some people say it don't have no taste. Not much, this is a smoked paprika, it's regular, but it's gonna help provide some of the color that we need. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of my whole girl, Miss Singing in the Rain. All right, I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. I'm gonna tell y'all why I just put a little bit in there. Maybe a little more. <laughs> Ooh. All right, it's all right, have no fear, have no fear. Stir that up, ooh. That's looking real icky and mucky right now, ain't it? Yes. Yeah. That's what I want. See all that? That char? People got to understand too, a little bit of char is actually good for your digestive system. But we're going to pull some of that char out. And that's what we're going to use to get rid of the COVID. Now, I'm going to dump some water in here. So y'all hold tight. Y'all hold tight. Don't go nowhere. I'm gonna bring y'all some water. Now, while my water is filling up, I wanna show you guys the star of the show. Again, I said we're plant-based, we're vegan. So I'm always on the hunt for uh, flavor replacements and stuff that can emulate, uh, you know, certain meats. The reason why, you know, we're drawn to meats uh, is because they have what's called umami, all right? It, it's actually a real, a real word, uh, but what that umami does is it helps satisfy certain portions on your tongue. And so this happens to be a chicken-based bouillon powder that I get from the Asian market that is vegan. So a lot of stuff is accidentally vegan. So when I bring my water over here, we're gonna add that, and I promise it's gonna taste like some good old chicken soup. All right, whole thing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here I'm pouring in water. All right, I just filled up this picture. I'll be back. Got to put some more in there. All right, we got some more. Also, the thing about those powders, um, those bouillon powders usually are a little heavy in sodium. That's another reason why I don't put a whole lot of salt in there uh, because, you know, it's going to be salty enough. It's going to have that flavor from it. So got to get some more water. All right, I'm making a whole lot of this. Again, I got a bunch of family and friends that I got to look out for. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little more water in there. It's gonna be a lot of soup in there. All right, perfect. Now guys, it happens to be New Year's Eve. These aren't part of the video, but I already was cooking, so. 
you know, you know, you got to hate some black eyed peas on New Y'all see that? Cut Googling. <laughs> Father God off of him. It's plant based, y'all. V. I know you waiting on that ham hawk to come jumping out of there and start start making noises like flipping, but that's not gonna happen. All right, that's vegan, y'all. Ain't no ham hocks in there. But we gotta show y'all a little bit of this. The greens. Y'all, they good, y'all. Like, I, I wouldn't, I ain't even trying to hold you. I ain't, I ain't lying to you, I ain't playing no games with you. I promise, all right? <laughs> they good. You know they good when you, throw, you replace the D with a T. They good. All right, they good, y'all. All right, so we got we got other stuff going on. This back here simmering and getting happy. So now this is a lot of water, guys. So don't y'all get mad at me, cause it's about to appear that I'm about to be real heavy with this bouillon powder. I believe. Uh, let me tell y'all the directions, cause I know y'all may get mad at me. It's two tablespoons per four cups of boiling water or boiling broth. So let's break that on down. Uh, half, and it's tablespoon, right? Teaspoons, I'm sorry. So it's half a teaspoon per cup or eight ounces of water. I didn't measure this out. <laughs> but don't worry, we got it, it's gonna taste good. All right, so y'all say when. Say when, y'all. Say when. <laughs> now nah, don't worry, trust me, that, that's probably not even, uh, you know, fully enough. Now let me find one of my, one of my cauldron spoons that I like getting down with. Uh, here, here, over here. This is my handy dandy soup spurn, spurn, stern spoon. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm getting excited. So hold on, let me mix this up. Let me mix this up. Let me mix this up. We got some of the clumps and all that. Don't worry, the water's very hot. They'll dissolve shortly. Look at all my aromatics swimming around. We're gonna leave them in there. The cinnamon sticks, the ginger, the garlic, the lemongrass, the celery, the shallot, the onion, the pepper, the carrots, the Thai chili. We're leaving it all in there. All right, because it's gonna continue to pull all that goodness out of there. What I like to do here at this point is taste the seed. Believe it or not, guys, <laughs> that's pretty doggone good. <laughs> uh, you know, I think I think we're good now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our superfood, watercress. It's been chopped. It's been cleaned. I know some of y'all saw me earlier say, I sure hope you gonna. It's been chopped and cleaned, and you know this is going to dissolve down to just about nothing. But we all know that, you know, uh, there's a ton of water content in our green leafy vegetables. We're going to pull out all of that chloroplast and all that stuff that's just dope for you. We're going to dump it in here. And we know it's going to wilt. But we want the liquid that's going to be pulled off of that watercress. We want that infused in our soup. We want that liquor. How many of y'all grew up back in the day? Old folks would make a pot of greens. All that juice that was in them greens I just showed y'all. They were like, boy, don't you throw that out, say that, that, that pot of liquor. We want all that liquor out of there, y'all. That's what we want, all right? So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna give it a good stir, all right? My God, my God. I know when y'all saw me chopping stuff up and then I started burning this stuff in this pot, y'all probably was like, that joker don't know what he doing. Ain't nobody about to eat that burnt up mess with twigs and bread. Look at that twig, y'all. But trust me, trust me, trust me, guys. This will send COVID right up out of here. This is the eviction letter for COVID. All right. We're going to let this simmer, y'all. We'll be right back. So basically what we got here, uh, that broth can be a base that you can use for a lot of things. A lot of our favorite restaurants that we go to, you ever go to a restaurant and wonder why in the world food might be so good or so flavorful? Or, you know, let's go all the way back to when grandma and them used to cook 
and say, man, all their food just tastes so good. Well, they took their time. The greens tasted good because that ham hock or that smoked turkey or that boudin, whatever, boiled in that water and simmered in that water for hours before they even put the greens in there. They allowed those flavors really to build. So what a lot of people do in the culinary world to uh, kind of save some time is they will always create certain broths uh, and bases so that they can use to uh, kind of shave some time off and get to that, that powerful flavor right off the bat. So we, you saw us create the base for that soup. You can create that same base, just don't put your watercress in it or what have you. And you got a base that you can put in your refrigerator. It will last for a good time. I would, I would say anywhere from a week to two weeks in the refrigerator. You can freeze it. You can use that to boil pasta in, um, you know, you know, instead of just using water, you can use that broth to boil your rice and other dishes, quinoa, couscous, and now add some flavor depth. But we're going we're gonna to show a little bit of the versatility of that broth there. So what I have going here, I just put a little bit of oil down here in this pan. We are going to make a creamy coconut rice pilaf, okay? We're using the base, which essentially is like a chicken stock, but, you know, vegan chicken. We're using this base for my stock. Uh, we're going to use some veggies. I'm also going to put a can of coconut milk in there, the thick coconut milk. Coconut milk will work wonders, y'all, when it comes down to making really good sauces, those Alfredo sauces and creamy sauces like that. Coconut milk is a really good hat. We're going to dump some nutritional yeast in there, and we're actually going to cook our rice in these things with it. I got a little uh, visitor over here. Y'all say hey to uh, Indiana Miles. Jones. Oh, Miles. I'm sorry. I thought your name was Indiana Jones or Crocodile Dundee. Okay. Y'all, he got superpowers. He can fly. All right. Yeah. All right. So we, there you go. We're we going to get him on out of here. Uh, get him on out of the frame. <laughs> huh? But we're back. So look, our oil is making a little bit of noise. There's just from some moisture earlier. All right. All right, here, I already did it, it's the magic of the TV. <laughs> I got celery, I shaved some carrots with my peeler, I got onion, and I got shallot in there. All right. And I got that stuff going. All right. Make sure my celery broke up here. I'm going to go ahead and separate my onion, 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 onion. All right, I'm using canola oil today for the most part. I usually try to keep grapeseed oil on deck. I try to use that. We also use uh, olive oil and avocado oil. You just want to saute that until, you know, it starts getting a little translucent. Again, we got our, we got our, this is just a just to coat a little bit for flavor, because we got a lot of flavor. Oh Lord, my garlic trying to go on strike. He said, "I better put some respect on his name." He said his name is Garlic, not Garlic. Whatever. We're gonna create this flavor profile here. All right. I'm not really worried about a bunch of salt because remember. Our base has enough salt in it already, okay? Paprika, really help bring the flavor out. I'm gonna throw a little bit of that in here. Now remember, our herbs and a lot of other spices, those flavors are already gonna be in our, um, in our broth, in our base, that we're actually gonna cook the rice in. All right, so pretty much what we're doing now is we're taking some of that stock from that superfood soup, and uh, I'm using it as the broth or the liquid for my rice. I'm also going to add in some creamy coconut milk here, and y'all, <laughs> this finna be blissful. Nutritional yeast. Another thing that provides umami, very similar to the flavor profile of cheese. So it has a very nutty, cheesy type taste. All right, we're going to put that in there. That's going to give it that nutty creaminess, almost like, like some sort of fettuccine sauce. It even smells kind of like cheese. All 
right, when this water comes to a boil, we dumping our rice in. All right, we got two cups of jasmine rice we about to put in that. That was right around two cups of broth and uh, a can of coconut milk was around 13 ounces, but I let it simmer down some. All right, you stir in your jasmine rice. Okay. Stir it in good. Turn your heat down to a low simmer. And what we're going to do now is let that simmer for about 15 minutes. All right, y'all. So basically what we're getting ready to do here is we're getting ready to fluff this rice up. Anybody that's ever cooked rice, you know you got to fluff it toward the end of the cooking process. And man, is it fluffy. It's like some some cotton balls like some big old cumulo nimbus clouds <laughs> fluffy rice y'all all right y'all basically here we stirring up this superfood soup don't it look good y'all look at all them ingredients just swimming in there come on i know covid had it all locked down i know we all wanted to hop in a good old jacuzzi don't that make you think about a good old jacuzzi I can hear Fat Joe and Little Joe singing right now. I don't want to be a player no more. What are you at? Hot tub, popping bubbly. bubbly. What y'all know about that? Look at that suit, cuz. Ooh, woo! All right, so right here, y'all, I'm tasting this suit. O M G. Delicious. I gotta go back in for another scoop. All right, and now we're gonna try out this creamy rice pilaf. Y'all see how creamy it is? Look like some rice aroni, don't it? <laughs> Sight. I made that. Oh my God. Jesus Christ.